Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining this uh, first webinar with Elastos and Alibaba Cloud exploring building the next um, in terms of our partnership and introduction into our respective projects and companies and what we can do. I'm Fakul Mia, the head of growth for the Elastos ecosystem. Um, by way of background, um, I actually come from the investment banking industry, having spent 17 plus years at Morgan Stanley, where I was the global head of margin financing, technology development, and risk and control. Um, I'm honored to say um, we're also joined by Sasha. Sasha, if you want to introduce yourself. It's uh, great to be here. Uh, my name is Sasha. I'm the CEO and founder of Elasti, a multimedia platform being built on uh, Elastos. Um, we're using an access to economy model, which I'm excited to talk about. Um, my background is very heavy in the creative industry. So I studied music production, uh, where I looked at the intersection of creativity with engineering, um, sound engineering, and then I moved into the film industry uh, where I 3D scanned assets and turned them into digital environments. Um, this could be anything from environments, um, actors, props, uh, and it's used for visual effects and CGI. Uh, so during that time, I had the pleasure of working from everyone from Netflix uh, to Universal to Disney, working on productions from Jurassic World, Batman, uh, and, and many more. Um, it's been an incredible journey, but Web3 captured me along that way uh, and completely took me uh, down this road to where I am today. So I'm looking forward to getting the chance to talk a little bit more about that. Great, thanks, Asha. Um, and we're joined by friends from Alibaba Cloud. Uh, let, let's start with uh, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hey, hello. Hello, everyone. This is Michelle. I currently am an occupier the, the position head of MNC and Web3 Business. I started my career uh, 15 years ago in France, in Paris, as a telecom engineer in Academia Lucent Groups. And then I joined the Accenture Atos Groups as a business consulting partners. And then my mainly focus on the innovations and the new technologies. And uh, six years ago, I joined Alibaba uh, Europe teams. And then we started my journey, digital journey with Alibaba Cloud. And currently, I, my team is actually focused on the Web3 business and the innovations. And hopefully we can build the Web3 business agreed again with our partners. Thank you. Great, thank you, Michelle. And last but not least, we also have Raymond from Alibaba Cloud. Hi, Raymond. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Raymond Xiao. I currently look after uh, you know Alibaba Cloud International's uh, Web3 solutions. So um, I my main responsibility is to formulate the product and solution strategies for Alibaba Cloud International and provide the support to our community, our ecosystem partner, and also our business in the front uh, across the world. So uh, prior to this uh, um, job, I I was with uh, Alibaba Cloud for more than seven years. I work as a, uh, you know, cloud architect, uh, solution architect leaders, uh, you know, in different uh, country and territories. And prior to uh, joining Alibaba Cloud, I was with, uh, you know, some of the, you know, large multinational uh, companies as, uh, you know, technical consultants. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Raymond. So I'm very excited. Thanks, everyone, for joining this session. It's definitely one that our respective communities have been looking forward to, to learn more about the partnership between Elastos and Alibaba Cloud. So some of the topics we'll cover today is brief introductions. Um, I'll give a quick overview of Elastos for those that are new to our ecosystem. Um, Sasha will cover LSET and how it's heroes, the different components of our Web3 technology stack. Um, and then, you know, Michelle will give an introduction on Alibaba Cloud um, um, as an overview. Uh, and then Raymond will cover Alibaba Cloud Web3 um, services. And then we've got an exciting panel discussion towards the end that will title Building the Next Alibaba Cloud and Elastos. And, you know, some of the opportunities that we see on how we can partner, as well as discuss, you know, the future of the Web3 space and how projects and companies such as Elastos and Alibaba Cloud can contribute to its development. And then we'll round off, hopefully if we have enough time, um, with some Q&A uh, from our respective communities. So without further ado, let, let, let's kick off. So 
It's my pleasure to present Elastos, a revolutionary ecosystem that empowers individuals, businesses, and brands to take control of their digital destiny. Our mission is to reshape the digital landscape, providing a new opportunity to set things right in the era of Web3. Let's embark on this journey together and explore the possibilities that lie ahead. Our journey begins with the title of our presentation, Elastos, Taking Control of Your Digital Destiny. This encapsulates the vision and essence and the pivotal role that Elastos plays in shaping the future of the digital world. In this digital omniverse we live in, it's crucial to understand who we are and how we fit into this ever evolving landscape. We find ourselves increasingly immersed in a digital realm, constantly connected, engaging in activities such as shopping, working, gaming, socializing, and creating. However, we often overlook an essential aspect of this digital existence, our data. We really pause to consider who owns it and who monetizes it. The shift to Web3 presents us with a unique opportunity to rectify this situation. Web3 represents a paradigm shift where decentralized systems enable users to reclaim control over their data. But what does this mean for individuals, businesses, and brands? How can they navigate this digital reality? Here at Elastos, we firmly believe that you should be able to experience this new digital reality in your own way. We have dedicated the past five years to building the foundations of Web3 because we recognize the importance of your data and your autonomy. It's your data, it's your life, and you deserve the right to decide what to do with it. Through Elastos's Web3 solutions, platforms, and technologies, Businesses, brands, and individuals can tap into the true power of Web3. We provide the tools necessary to build the next generation of tooling, services, and platforms. However, it all starts with addressing the identity challenges that Web3 presents. After all, you cannot navigate your path until you truly know who you are. Let's delve into the concept of identity. In a digital realm where we can adopt any persona, what makes us unique? How do we prove our identity when it is required? Moreover, how can businesses effectively reach customers and personalize their products, services, and marketing efforts? The answer lies in decentralized identifiers. With Elastos's solutions, your self-sovereign, verifiable self can become whoever you desire putting your identity back in your hands. While Web3 holds immense potential, it also grapples with identity problems. However, Elastos has been at the forefront of addressing this issue. For the past five years, we have been diligently building the components Web3 needs to create verifiable, trusted, self-sovereign identities that seamlessly work across different blockchains. Elastos stands as the only Web3 ecosystem with a blockchain solely dedicated to decentralized identifiers. Our Elastos identity chain empowers users with unlimited control, security, and interoperability, paving the way for a truly decentralized internet. Elastos offers a range of open source decentralized infrastructure solutions, platforms, and technologies designed to address the core identity challenges facing Web3. Let's explore three fundamental aspects. User-managed identities. How can users have self-sovereign control over their data, property, and anonymity while remaining credible and trusted? Zero-knowledge identity. How can platforms, governments, and institutions ensure compliance and credentialing without requiring personal data? Interoperable identity. How can a decentralized Web3 guarantee universal access and secure autonomic experiences while also enabling targeted marketing and commercial viability? Our Elastos identity chain stands as bedrock of trust and control over authentication. Elastos's 
DIDs cannot be stolen, imitated, or incorrectly authenticated. This means that users own their most important asset of all, themselves. By directly implementing W3C and DIS standards into the EID chain, we uphold the highest standards of security and transparency. Elastos offers verifiable on and off-chain credentials, enabling zero-knowledge proofs in place of traditional KYC processes. Moreover, the EID chain allows for an unlimited number of DIDs, providing users and businesses the flexibility to generate and register DIDs for each device, individual, product, and more. Elastos offers three core solutions, each packed with a full suite of tools and technologies. Regardless of your motivations for exploring Web3, Elastos is here to shape your identity and your destiny. Let's start with your business destiny. Elastos provides private, secure, enterprise blockchains and decentralized tools tailored to business and governments. Our suite of business solutions allows you to build the next generation of your enterprise, enhance processes, data provenance, and transparency throughout supply chains, contract management, commerce, mobility, and more. Our solutions are fully customizable to meet your specific needs. Moving on to financial destiny, Elastos offers a transparent and secure financial suite for true decentralized trading, staking, lending, and bridging on and off chain. With Elastos's dual chain architecture, smart contract chain, essential super wallet, and industry leading elastic consensus, you can build the next generation of financial products. Our solutions ensure fast, affordable, and efficient transactions, empowering you to navigate the financial trans landscape with confidence. Last but not least, your creative destiny. Elastos provides a verified metaverse for creative entrepreneurs seeking to build the next generation of content platforms, games, social networks, and marketplaces. Creators can harness the power of Elastos' tech stack to gain financial control over their content, data, and intellectual property. Our suite of creative solutions can be fully tailored to suit your unique needs and aspirations. To support these solutions, Elastos has built a comprehensive Web3 technology stack from the ground up, providing developers with the tools they need to build the decentralized web services, products, and platforms of the future. Our developer tools empower creators with the means to bring their visions to life. These tools include Elastos's DIDs, Hive for secure storage, Carrier for encrypted peer-to-peer -peer communication, digital rights management for protecting intellectual property, and Elastos Runtime for secure code execution. Additionally, Elastos offers a range of open source network services and platforms in partnership with our partners that support developers in connecting, storing, sharing, and selling their creations. Our network services include such as Creda, which offers a credit oracle for trusted credentials and targeting data, Shadow Tokens and Elk for secure cross-chain bridging, Paladin for blockchain contract auditing, Ellabox for personal hardware nodes, Essentials for self-custodial super wallet, and Elicity and Passar for decentralized marketplaces. The Elastos ecosystem provides a composable Web3 technology stack, where various components seamlessly integrate to empower developers and users alike. In Elastos's interoperable ecosystem, exchanges, oracles, smart contracts, dedicated technical teams, and a mature DAO governance system work together to foster a vibrant and thriving environment for innovation. So what is the Elastic Consensus? The Elastic Consensus serves as a pioneering approach to decentralization within the Elastos ecosystem. It secures security, it ensures security and flexibility through three consensus mechanisms. 
the first one, auxiliary proof of work, which leverages Elastos's main chain and integrates Bitcoin miners hash rate to produce blocks through merge mining, thereby providing the safety and security benefits of Bitcoin across the Elastos ecosystem in a sustainable and cost-efficient way. Second, variable bonded proof of stake, a unique hybrid delegated proof of stake mechanism that offers bonding time, an improved profit sharing model, increased inactive active set mobility and secure block finality, creating a stable and efficient foundation for Elastos. Third, proof of integrity, a consensus layer backed by strong protocols and the Elastos Cyber Republic DAO. Annually, 12 entities are elected to the Cyber Republic Council by ELA token holders. And council members operate their own validators and participate in consensus and improvement plans. Variable bonded proof of stake, and this is important um, because it will touch on the Alibaba Cloud Partnership. So variable bonded proof of stake allows users to bond their ELA for a specific duration, ranging from 10 to 1,000 days. In return for equity tokens, these equity tokens can be staked with validators of their choosing. Validators can register by depositing 2,000 ELA for a minimum commitment of 100 days to participate in consensus and earn rewards. A validator must receive a minimum of 80,000 equity votes. The bonding time and corresponding vote equity are as follows. 10 days translates to one ELA equals one vote equity, 100 days, one ELA equals two vote equity, and 1,000 days, one ELA equals three vote equity. Validators and stakers are rewarded with ELA tokens for helping to secure the network. Now in partnership with Alibaba Cloud, we've set up um, steps on how to set up a BPOS node in partnership with Alibaba Cloud. For detailed information on the Alibaba Cloud node as a service offering, please refer to the provided links on the screen or the QR code. On, uh, that you can see. It will provide you with valuable insights into setting up a BPOS node. For additional help and support, please visit the Elastos Developer Portal or our community channels on Discord. These resources will provide you an in-depth instructions and support throughout the process. With Elastos, we provide developers with a complete and comprehensive open source technology stack that empowers them to build truly decentralized applications, whether it's games, social platforms, decentralized finance, marketplaces, or more. Elastos has the tools you need to bring your vision to life. We have a white glove service. When you choose Elastos, you're not alone in your development journey. We offer a service where a lead developer and customer success representative will be available to guide you through the design, build and deployment of your project. We're here to support you every step of the way with our fantastic community. Grants. Additionally, through the Elastos Cyber Republic DAO, builders with Elastos can propose and apply for grants to support their development or go-to-market strategies. We believe in fostering innovation and providing resources to help you succeed. Marketing support. We understand that launching a project can be challenging. That's why Elastos provides affordable support for brand building, PR, go-to-market strategies, and community building. We want to help you gain visibility and reach your target audience effectively. 24-7 support. At Elastos, we and our community prioritize collaboration and support. Our community admins, DAO members, and project teams are available around the clock to troubleshoot any unforeseen challenges that may arise. Rest assured, you're not alone in your journey. So why Elastos is the right choice for building the future of the internet? The transition from web two to web three presents us with an opportunity to correct the shortcomings of the centralized internet infrastructure we have today. Currently, Major corporations profit from our data and control what we see and believe. 
Elastos believes in putting the power back into the hands of users. Elastos, as the original champion of Web3, provides all the necessary tools to build the next generation of decentralized applications. Our focus is on empowering individuals and enabling them to regain control over their digital lives. With Elastos, you, we, we can redefine who we are and who we want to be in this expanding digital world. So the question remains, what will be your digital destiny? With Elastos, you have the opportunity to shape it according to your vision and values. Join us in embracing Web3 and creating a future that is built on decentralization, trust, and user empowerment. However, it's showtime. Words are cheap. Elastos has built the core architecture for an open source, decentralized Web3, enabling the emergence of a new paradigm known as the Web3 access economy. Let us delve into Elicity, a groundbreaking project that not only demonstrates the power of the Elastos ecosystem, but also embodies the essence of the Web3 access economy. But what is the Web3 access economy? It's a revolutionary concept where individuals have control and ownership over their data, identity, and digital assets. It's a future where users can freely interact, transact, and collaborate in a secure, transparent, and decentralized environment. LSCT is at the forefront of this movement, pioneering the way forward. Let me hand over to Sash, who will take us on a journey into the intricacies of LSCT and provide a more detailed insight into its innovative features. Sash, over to you. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you so much for calling. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today and talking with Alibaba. I think this partnership, there's so many great um, opportunities and benefits that can come from it. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about Elasti. Um, so a quick little story. Uh, Shenzhen in China transformed from a small fishing village to a metropolitan city of 13 million in just over 40 years. Um, so its growth is largely due to the allowance of private property and freedom to start businesses. Uh, Shenzhen now has surpassed Hong Kong in GDP and is often called the Silicon Valley of China. This transformation really shows us the potential of free environments to create new markets and opportunities. Uh, when we create the ability to have free markets, um, lots of benefits can emerge from this. So when we look at our current internet and we look at our era that we are in today, um, we could consider it as pre-industrial, characterized by limited control, and we have outdated systems and restricted creativity. So these conditions negatively affect ownership, productivity, and the development of inclusive environments and markets. Um, so when we look at the last us and everything we're building here, it's actually a suite of tools coming together to enable us to become independent online for the first time. Fundamentally, it starts with decentralized identities, but then you need other components like decentralized storage. You need the ability to protect your assets. You need protocols to exchange assets through. Uh, and I'm gonna quickly run through these now and talk about exactly what we do as Elasti, um, because ultimately Elasti is a distribution platform and we're designed to revolutionize the digital asset landscape by leveraging these decentralized technologies. Uh, we believe in open markets and user-controlled identities. So our mission is to free creativity through the access economy, which is a new economic model that promotes equitable and inclusive digital environments. Uh, and it's extremely exciting to be a part of this. I think we can all say that in the Web3 space, really, we're just in the evolution of the internet. And technology is there to empower us to do more for less. And so as these new technologies emerge, we're able to do more on the internet without relying on centralized entities, which ultimately create more efficiency and drive down operational costs, meaning we get more. So we can earn through this mechanism and create a new economy for ourselves that benefits us. So quickly, the problem today that we see in data distribution is um, it limits user controls and monetization opportunities. So it's very centralized and there are inefficient and outdated digital rights management systems, which are means in which to protect your data. Uh, and there are inefficient and opaque royalty distribution systems. So we often rely on a centralized entity to collect royalties on behalf of us if we're a content creator. And then in most cases, they issue them out on a quarterly basis and it's done quite loosely and um, based on estimates. So it's quite hard to actually manage. 
And we also have problems with piracy and copyright infringement issues, particularly in regards to peer-to-peer -peer distribution, um, such as torrents. Uh, despite torrents being peer-to-peer, -peer, the issue is that it's illegal in most cases and the content isn't protected that's being traded. Um, but the value is there still in this distribution system. Um, there's barriers to entry for creators and there's high revenue fees associated with centralized platforms. Um, let's use YouTube, they take roughly 45%, Spotify takes 65%. You know, when we talk about technology empowering us, we're saying let's now enable content creators to make upwards of 90% and then enable others to also participate in these royalty distributions. Um, so that's what we're here to do. We're here to enable open, equitable, scalable and inclusive decentralized uh, markets for all types of assets. This could range from videos to music to podcasts to gaming. And then we can extend into services and even look into the metaverse. Um, we, we supply the underlying infrastructure to empower, to empower this economy. Um, so, uh, for cool, if you don't mind um, switching to the next slide. Brilliant. So, Elastos DRM. Um, so, myself and the Elasti team, uh, we've been integral in building out this uh, infrastructure. Um, so, when you buy a movie on Amazon, do you really own it? When you buy a song on iTunes, do you have the ability to resell it like you do a physical item? Um, what makes it great today is we can rely on, a, let's say, eBay or a car boot sale where we can take something that we no longer need and sell it, or we can give it to charity. We don't have that ability online today, and that in itself um, raises a lot of issues in the, you know, the data ownership in the economy, uh, and also the ability to re-monetize something that you own. So the question is, do you really own it? So Elasti is responsible for building Elastis' DRM system. Uh, this system is built for managing digital assets such as media and intellectual property using smart contracts on a blockchain. So these unique smart contracts allow for the issuance, transfer and monetization of encrypted assets through access tokens, as well as the enforcement of rights and royalties for all stakeholders. Um, to give an example, Elasti encrypted a video on the interplanetary file storage system, uh, IPFS, and minted 8 billion access tokens to the global population um, on the Elastos testnet in under five seconds for less than a cent in gas fees. Each access token can be bought and traded in open markets, and holding an access token in your wallet, your non-custodial wallet, enables you to decrypt the content, in this case the video. Users can resell these tokens and content creators, when they mint these access tokens, can set a royalty percentage for these new buyers to earn on resale, including adding in all of the stakeholders involved in the production of the content. So you might have the content creators, you might have the, um, you might have the publishers, the distributors, or even uh, investors who helped create that media, where you can add in all of their addresses into the contract and with every purchase, that is streamed and the payment and their royalty distributions are streamed into their wallet per transaction. So we drastically increase the uh, efficiency of how royalty distribution is collected and paid out. So the benefits of this is flexible global business models for licensing and monetization via smart contracts. Uh, we have a conversion tool for transforming traditional, um, they're called content expression language and rights expression language DRM contracts. It's what's used traditionally today. And um, we have a tool that converts that into EVM smart contracts to be published. Uh, so this is to be inclusive for IP rights holders globally. Big businesses who hold IP today have these new markets which they can also interact with as much so as an individual can. Um, it's just a new area to, to monetize your rights. Uh, and then we have a variety of business models which are embedded in the access tokens, such as the ability to buy, the ability to resell, the ability for pay-per-view, um, to have it for free, but to watch an ad before you access uh, subscription models and rental. So really, we're bringing uh, business models into Web3 and enabling individuals to monetize themselves more effectively. Um, the stakeholder royalties with direct by transaction stream payments, which I mentioned, and the ability to actually trade these tokens on an open market. Uh, so it's really exciting today. It's for video and we can envision how this then gets applied to a broad range of assets. Um, for cool, if you don't mind switching to the next uh, slide. So everything we've spoken about today, um, we call them data capsules. We're trading access tokens to decrypt data capsules. Uh, now, what we put in those data capsules is up to the uh, creator. It can be digital assets of all kinds. But right now, the way we've structured it is the data capsule sits in the cloud as a fixed um, asset. 
and then people around the world can trade access tokens and decrypt this video in the cloud to enjoy. Um, it raises some problems in that um, for some people that's not an issue and we have plenty of services today that relies on streaming. Um, but actually to own your own data, um, we need to en envision a, a, an environment in which we bring data capsules into our personal, uh, into our personal setting. So um, I'll talk a little bit after this about decentralized identifiers, Elastos decentralized identifiers and data vaults. But what we want to envision is if a content creator for some reason stops hosting the file or stops paying for the file to be hosted in the cloud, you might own an access token, but you can't decrypt the media if it's no longer there. So there's the thought process of you need to trust no one but yourself. Um, Web3 has brought with, let's say, Bitcoin and Ethereum, the ability for us to manage our own finance, which is incredible. Um, Non-custodial, we're becoming more and more reliant on ourselves. Uh, the NFT side brought in the rights, but the problem with NFTs and why they get such a bad name is the blob of data that they present represent isn't protected. So there's not much point to it besides us trading rights to something. And the DRM aspect is about the encryption and protecting that blob of data. But in any case, we have the ability to have now the ownership of rights and trade them peer to peer. So we now must the next envision the ability to have ownership of data and to have them in our own data vaults and to be able to decrypt these data with our rights in a completely isolated environment. Uh, when we do this, we can now say, well, the content creator, rather than hosting it in the cloud, can issue out data capsules that can be downloaded. Uh, and then when they're downloaded in the data vault, the user can trust no one but themselves. If the content creator stops making content or stops hosting anything that's in the cloud, it doesn't matter because I have a copy of that. And that's what runtime is here for. So runtime, we're building a trusted execution environment. We're using WebAssembly, which means you can run it locally in your browser. Um, you would spawn your identity into Elasti using the Essentials Wallet, which I'll talk a bit, little bit about now, which encapsulates all the Elastos tools, but then you'll be able to actually download code. So rather than MP3s, rather than WAV files, we're turning data into code. And the first thing that happens when you have to run this code is it has to run in the runtime and the runtime checks against the blockchain before opening, do you own the access token in order to play this media? And if you do, then um, you're enabled to open it, but it also will check which specific rights you have in order to do that. Um, so when we turn data into code, we're actually enabling a layer of trust through blockchain. And it's my belief that globally at the moment, we're seeing a breakdown of trust. Um, it's a really, you know, it's quite a, a worrying issue. And the purpose of blockchain is to bring trust into a trustless environment. So when we talk about bringing blockchain and using it as the underlying technology to ensure trust, what we're really saying is we're enabling this new economy that's not only efficient, everyone gets royalty distributions, but actually you're accessing com uh, content or accessing services, which has been verified by the blockchain. And in order to do that, the content creator is being rewarded for what they have issued out. Um, great, uh, I'll call if you don't mind changing. So I spoke a little bit about um, identity. Uh, one of the fundamental problems in the Web2 space today is that we all use centralized logins. We log in to a blob of data. Uh, it, we, we could look at um, you know, each service that we use, be it Google, Facebook as their own internet, uh, and they all own the centralized identity. So we're all connecting into one big blob of data. But when we think about new identities and decentralized identities, we're effectively becoming our own blobs of data, our own dots. Uh, and so services like Elasti really is about connecting dots together in this new economy. Um, rather than everyone being in one blob of, of a big, big corporate dot and then the data being taken that they produce with their identity and being sold to advertisers, we're saying, well, actually, now you can become your own dot and you can collect your own data in your own data vault and you can use that however you please. And then a service like Elasti will help connect you with other individuals and business models will be something like a small service charge fee. But what that means is you're not passing away your data and it's not being sold to advertisers. And if it is, it's on your terms and you're making that decision. So we are, um, we've deeply integrated Elastos did into our um, environment. Right now, our marketplace um, uses Elastos did to enable you to log in. You can share your uh, avatar, you can share your, your name, your description um, with the protocol without it being stored on a central server. And you would share this from your data vault, which will be in the next slide. 
but really at the top of the hierarchy of a user-owned economy is the, is the identity, the Elastos bid. Um, and below that, you have your data vault, a place to store your data. You have the ability to have verifiable credentials, so to build reputation. Um, on Elasti today, you can sign in with your DID, and then you can go to Twitter, I'm um, sorry, you can um, log in on Twitter through Elasti, which um, verifies that you own that Twitter account, and we will issue you a blue tick, um, which says that your account uh, as a vendor, a shop vendor, um, has verified that they own this Twitter account. So now someone coming to your shop can see at least and learn a little bit more about you. Um, we do this for Discord, we do this for email. And then the further steps, if you want to green tech, that you can do a KYC with a third party. And whilst you're not giving your personal information or making it public, you're showcasing that you've performed and know your customer check with a third party and you've got a green tick from it. And um, for cool, if you don't mind changing to the next. So Elastos Hive provides users with a decentralized um, storage solution, ranging from personal to enterprise solutions. I'm quite excited to think about um, avenues in which we can explore with Alibaba in, in this regard too, because actually, um, you know, everyone's going to need a place to store their data. And some people don't want to have to store it themselves. They, they'd rather have a service provider in which they can pay. In the same way, um, there's centralized logins today and there's uh, companies catering to these logins which is completely fine it just brings with it the certain business models and um, there's a new market of merging to catering towards decentralized identities and with that um, decentralized storage is a huge one so when we talk about runtime and enabling individuals to store code uh, what those individuals will need to decide is where do they want to store their code and who, who do they want to, as their provider uh, and so in this peer-to-peer -peer environment, we can then env envision assets being transferred data vault to data vault, uh, decentralized storage to decentralized storage, uh, and it advances the concept of the access economy. Uh, so uh, if you don't mind switching to the next one, please. Cool. So when we talk about owning your own um, storage solution, you've got your own identity, you've got your own storage, you've got your own wallet with your rights in it and um, payment mechanisms. And then you've got encrypted assets which you can trade. You need a mechanism in which for them to transfer peer to peer from um, decentralized storage vault to the other. And in this case, we have Elastos Carrier. Uh, and Elastos Carrier is a decentralized peer to peer network. Um, it uh, enables individuals to, uh, to, to send data directly with each other. And they're found on the network through their DID. And it's um, not only just for data sharing, but actually for communications and socials as well. So really with these tool sets all coming together, we become independent dots on the internet where we can uh, build our own reputation, we can have our own data vaults, we can manage our own payments, uh, we can purchase uh, data from other uh, vendors around the world, we can resell them on and monetize in every single transaction, the royalties are distributed out to every single stakeholder involved in that process. And we are now entering into an access economy where it's user owned and it's inclusive and open for all. Uh, so it's an extremely um, great privilege to get to be part of this um, kind of moment in history as, as we all see everyone globally building these tool sets. And, and I think uh, we are almost a part of the, um, yeah, the pre-industrial era. So we are going to be entering into the era of privatization where we can own our own data. And with that, brand new markets will arise. And I think we'll see the data economy open up in ways which we haven't yet seen. So, um, for us, we believe deeply in Elastos. We believe in all the technology tools that make it so special, but really it's about the combination of tools that make it such a great platform. Um, you know, Bitcoin is what it is due to a combination of tool sets that make, made it work. Many tried to make it before. Um, there was uh, Hashgraph, there was Bcash. Bitcoin came around and they had all the right pieces and it became uh, successful. The same way Ethereum and the same way with all technologies is about combining innovations together. Uh, so Elastos is offering, um, founded by both Ron Chen and Ben Hang, um, comes with years of experience in the uh, computer science field. And uh, it's very exciting to start to see everything come together now and this new economy emerge. And for us, we are here to, to issue and to offer the access economy there. Thank you very much. Last but not least. So um, finally, to just conclude what I was saying before, everything is made accessible through Elastos Essentials, uh, which is the super wallet. So the ability to have your own DID when you sign up is automatic.
automatically generated and the ability to have your own data vaults, uh, the ability to, to move data through carrier and to manage your um, cryptocurrencies, but also your NFT rights. Uh, it's all made possible through this wallet. I talked about how we're moving into this non-custodial world. I would say that Essentials Wallet is leading in the full stack in enabling you to be completely independent online. And so if you get the chance, uh, head over and download the Essentials Wallets on Android and iOS, have a play around and get a feel for it because it's an incredible wallet um, with many great benefits. And whether it's um, scanning a QR code on your desktop on Elasti and spawning your identity in a desktop environment or using the inbuilt browser to log in, uh, the idea is that you take your identity wherever you go and your identity at the end of the day comes down to a set of seed phrases which you can spawn on any device giving you remember that. So it truly is the user owned um, and uh, yeah, worth, worth downloading and having a play around if you haven't yet. Cool. Thank you very much, um, Tash. And um, it's a great example of how businesses and users can take control of their digital destiny. Um, so let me now hand over to Michelle, who will give us a introduction to Alibaba Cloud. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks, Foku. Thanks for the wonderful presentation of the Elastic and and also you your best practice, especially for this runtime DRM, DID, and super wallet. I think this is a wonderful story. So then we I will share about uh, what will be Alibaba and give the general presentation and the introduction of Alibaba Cloud. Yeah. So when we call Alibaba Cloud, our slogan is our tech for innovations. And uh, when you see the Alibaba, we first say that we can remain Alibaba groups. When we see the Alibaba groups, we start from e-commerce platforms. We start our basic from 1999. And then uh, in the coming years, we ex expand, extend our basis to finance, logistic, and cloud computing. And you see that cloud, cloud, Alibaba Cloud is built in 2009 just uh, 10 years after our the foundation of e-commerce platforms. And uh, today we have become the number one cloud service provider in Asia Pacific and number three worldwide. And when we see that the Alibaba milestone, uh, you see that we have established Alibaba Cloud at the year 2009. And then there is several important milestones. Uh, we start our business in China, and then at the year 2014, we start our globalizations. So this is our the milestone, and then we start to implement our availability zones in different <clears throat> regions globally. And then at the year 2017, we are become the top providers of all packages. And uh, then we start our business with MNC, with different innovation companies, and then we start our globalizations with our wonderful team in the hours world. And in the past 13 years, we have focused on our self-developed app server stacks. And also we built our AI platforms and also we provide high quality IT infrastructure to support our internet-based customers. And we have uh, implemented our global IDCs to support our global MNC business. And you see that in the coming 10 years, we have different trends, but the four trends that of different infrastructures will be our four key workers. First is it will be cloud. We need to provide hello. reliabilities and- Hello. Hello, Ramon. And uh, also we found that IoT and digitalization and even mobile is our focus. And you'll see that for the coming 10 years, I truly believe the metaverse and the Web3 business is also our focus for the, for the future. When you see the Alibaba Group's business, we can see that we have the business groups for the different vertical. We have China commerce, international commerce, local commerce services, and the digital media and the entertainment. As presented by the Sasha, you have best practice in the media industries. I truly believe that we can combine our innovations and your perfect, wonderful technologies in the future with Yoku, Alibaba Pictures, and even our related companies. Okay. And also, what's more, last but not least, 
innovation of our focus for Alibaba groups, we have a demo academies who is always focused for the best innovations and the technologies for the future. All is one, we can see that this is empowered by Alibaba Cloud. So Alibaba Cloud provides the IT infrastructures for all kinds of digital business of Alibaba Group. And then link up the digital journey through Alibaba Cloud. You see that we have the digital operations. You found that we have the best in class cloud computing infrastructures. And also we have the best solutions for the broadcasting service. And also we have to provide a new digital experience, which will be included for the metaverse battery. And when you what you need to plan, even when we discuss Web3, Web2, you need a very robust global IT infrastructures to support your business, right? So when you, you start your business, you will see that who can provide the, the most availability zones in the wider regions. So actually, Alibaba Cloud provides 86 availability zones in eight, 28 regions. And you can see that most of the business and RDC is focused in the Asia Pacific, right? So we are the, that's why we are the number one cloud service provider in Asia Pacific. And we plan most of them with the, for the ESG, uh, ESG regulations, great data centers, and high availabilities to support our business globalizations. And then you see that actually we are listed as a top public service yes per marketer in China, we have occupied made more than 33% of the business. And also we are focused also in the different products. You can see that even for the infrastructure, for compute storage, even for security networks, we are always the best performers when the classing with the different uh, uh, comparisons. And also even for database, we are progressing rapidly and uh, we all will be, we will, change our status from a challenger to be a leaders in the coming 10 years. And why you choose Alibaba and why you cooperate with us in Asia Pacific? We have different reasons, but the way as a, firstly, we have the best practice, we have the biggest yeah, yes market share in Asia Pacific. We have provided the robust clouding, clouding service for our customers and uh, we have the most data centers and citizen don'ts to provide the best quality services, special for the media customers, and also uh, placed as a visionaries in the magic content of the cloud infrastructures from the, from the year 2021, and always the number one in, co in compute, storage, and networks in and for security in Gartner solutions. As it was more, is that we have our strong ecosystem. I think it is very important both, both for Alibaba and also Elastos. So we want to enable our customers and also our business partners to build a strong ecosystems from Web 2 and to Web 3, right? So that's why we, we want to see that we have the solutions, we have innovations, how we can in, engage with the innovation leaders, especially with Web 3. I think Elastos will be the good choice for most of the enterprise customers and the developers. And then we have the global customers worldwide. And you see that most of the Fortune 500 companies trust us and we build a trustful digital collaborations. And we, we truly believe that in the Web3 world, we can make more success stories with the industry leaders. And then we can say, Lucy, as Elastos says, we use, we are enabled open resource technologies for our developers and Alibaba also can make the same things. So you can see that Alibaba Cloud participates in open source communities, different open source standards, and the, also we can see the approach and also the fling, everything we have done in the last 10 years. And we truly believe that we can do better with Elastos in the future. And then you can see the Alibaba Cloud product highlights, which we, which we can see that actually in the business of service, we have include our all our groups ecosystems with tiny outing talks, GMO for the application and basic service layers. And also we have strong collaborations with the different ISV and for VMware, SAP Salesforce provide vertical solutions for our business customers. And what's more, 
we are strong performers for infrastructure as a service. And you see that actually rich infrastructure portfolio can really enable our customers' choice, even for their Web3 business. And this is very important. You see, when you talk about Web3, when you call it BID and the digital wallet, I think security compliance is very important. That's why we want to have a strong connections with Elastos. We want to engage together because actually when we provide the service globally, we know we need to be follow the local compliance. And Alibaba, we have a strong engagement from Europe, US, and Asia Pacific market. And uh, we are the number one who got the C5 in Germany. So that's why, and also we get the certifications for the media industry for MPAA. So this is, this kind of certification enable Alibaba to be a strong performers and an industrial expert in the digital industry. And then we see the, actually we discussed a lot with Web3, Metaverse, even for AI. That's why we can introduce uh, recently model as a service. We have the industry AI models and we start this business in China currently and we'll expand this kind of experience as a business globally in the future, right? And uh, you'll see that we have the industry solutions and also best practice. Uh, we have done, you know, Alibaba started the, their base from the retails, e-commerce, but also we are leaders for the media entertainment. And then we we have our end financials, we have accumulated our rich experience for the financial services. And then we see that uh, from from the last last years, we start the our new journey with Web3. And then even Raymond Xiao will lead the Web3, the solution teams will enable the Web3 ecosystems, and we will build strong relationships with the Web3 industry leaders, such as Elastos, right? So I think that it's a bright future we'll with Alibaba Cloud, as, and I truly believe that we can make more best practice with us. And then we can see that with Alibaba Global Teams, we can deliver the, uh, the service plan, we can make the best SLA for our customers, and we can make the best solutions deliveries, and also, we can cover most countries with our global developers. And I truly believe that we could be the best partners from digital cloud for you. And uh, I truly believe that we can make the Web3 digital cloud journey together. And uh, I think and I truly believe that this kind of business will be happening and we, we will get more success in the future. And then I will let the, Mr. Raymond Xiao will give you more details introduction for the Web3 services for our developers and our ecosystem in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Mikhail. So let me share my screen. Cool. Uh, maybe you can uh, grant me the access. Uh, um... Michelle, if you can stop sharing your screen, then I can reclaim and uh, give, it, give it to Raymond. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, that was, a, that was a great presentation and it's phenomenal to see the growth Alibaba Cloud has had over the, you know, the last decade or so. And, and I think there was a really interesting point on one of the slides around having the highest SLA. And I think that's critical um, in the Web3 industry where, you know, uptime is uh, is essential, and not having it is is penalised in the blockchain space. So great to see that. And um, yeah, let's uh, let me give access to Raymond, and Raymond will give us a overview of Alibaba Cloud Web three solution. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, uh, Michelle, and thanks, uh, Baku, uh, about the previous introduction about Elastos and also, you know, Alibaba Cloud. So for this section, I will mainly talk about, uh, you know, how Alibaba Cloud view uh, the Web3 business and also the solutions and how we plan to go forward in the near futures. So my name is Raymond. I currently look after the, uh, you know, the international Web3 solutions for Alibaba Cloud International. And um, so like uh, Michelle just mentioned, 
for uh, Alibaba Cloud International, we start to um, you know formalize our Web3 strategy since last year and start to establish a team uh, who are specialized in Web3. And we start to plan for our product and solution roadmap that can help uh, the Web3 developers and the communities to build their Web3 applications on top using Alibaba Cloud. And of course, uh, we've been also working closely with, uh, you know, the industry uh, ecosystem uh, leaders such as Elastos to uh, further enrich our portfolio that can help our uh, builders. So here is our vision. We embrace our uh, the Web3 technologies and the communities uh, so that we can provide the best, um, you know, the underlying cloud uh, uh, technologies to to the you know the, the builders and the ecosystems so if we build it from the very bottom uh you know as the one of the biggest cloud providers in the world alibaba cloud we are in a very good position um to provide the ice and the past technologies to our um you know the builders who are able to quickly uh, spin um, up their cloud resources on top of alibaba but of course, well, after the cloud, uh, you know, uh, been fully um, established, it, the next step is to help to help, you know, the dev uh, developers to uh, build their blockchains or applications. So here we have been, um, you know, planning for, you know, some of the very really, uh, fantastic uh, products such as the, you know, the blockchain node services, which we will be releasing very soon. So uh, it will provide the API and RPC services for any uh, developers who can easily create their blockchain uh, applications on top of Alibaba Cloud. But of course, we also been uh, working closely with some of the leading partners on the you know, security portfolio to ensure that you know, any dApp uh, running securely on top of Alibaba Cloud. And um, and then you know ecosystem is very important. And in particularly, uh, when we see in the Web three uh, world, uh, you know we have plenty of uh, big names uh, in you know Europe, in the US, or in APEC. So for us, we are positioned to uh, you know enrich the whole ecosystem by partnering the best uh, of uh, you know the partners to uh, you know that we can offer and go to market together in the APEC market. But of course, um, you know how to facilitate our developers to easily build their dApps uh, and also um, on top of Alibaba by leveraging different uh, tools and to, uh, development toolkits and solutions. So that's another part which we'll be focusing on in the near future. And uh, lastly, it's about the community. So how we can leverage the you know the developer communities uh, in between uh, you know Web three and also the Web two, so that we can help the developers to grow um, in terms of the tech, uh, the knowledge and also the experiences. That's another part that we'll be focusing on. So Michelle just mentioned about uh, you know our position in um, you know in the uh, in the worldwide. So Alibaba Cloud now is the the, uh, the biggest cloud providers in uh, APEC. As we can see here, the, we have a, quite a large pool of resources in the APEC market, uh, not only within mainland China, but outside of mainland China. We also have some of the very unique, uh, you know, uh, data centers in APEC market, such as, uh, you know, uh, Thailand, such as, um, you know, um, uh, Philippines or even in Middle East, we have data centers in Dubai. So those would constitute our, you know, the full coverage of the cloud resources across the world. And for any of the builders and projects who are looking into the APEC market, definitely Alibaba Cloud can play a very important role to help you to accelerate your, um, you know, your application and also your innovations. And of course, we just mentioned about the richness of the you know developer communities. Uh, Alibaba Cloud has been uh, you know supporting the communities uh, you know through marketing events and a lot of different activities across the regions. Currently, we have more than ten millions of uh, com uh, developers uh, in in the in the regions, and we've been uh, sponsoring and supporting. Uh, these developers to grow via several different types of um, uh, events and um, exercises, such as some of the startup events and competitions uh, which are arranged in the regions from time to time. We also been uh, helping, you know, the developers and communities to um, to um, 
you know, on those uh, education efforts, and we are working with them on some of the cloud uh, certifications. And of course, we have been built up some of the those communities together with our ecosystem partners. So those would um, become one of our focus uh, in the you know uh, in the near future as well. And. This is uh, what we've been uh, working closely with, uh, you know, our partners to uh, build up the strong products and solutions that can easily be offered to uh, to the market. So we starting from the you know really the bottom the you know the cloud resources we've been um, have the you know very secure compute capabilities, including the you know the Intel SGX TEE. So for any of the developers who want to build a very secure and uh, fully hard hardware isolated uh, environment for your uh, applications, you can leverage our compute instance with the TEE capabilities. And of course, if you are looking into building up a distributed storage, then you can leverage some of the, the file systems such as CPFS and LDFS from, from our storage family. And uh, from net network, that's another strength of Alibaba Cloud, which I can also mention that uh, late in the later slide. So we provided one of the most comprehensive network uh, product families in the world, uh, including the cross-region network and also the global acceleration network that can help you to build a very secure and fast uh, network across the globe. And on top of the you know the cloud infrastructure, then we are building the you know the the blockchain node services, which is the you know the RPC service that can uh, facilitate the developers to build the blockchain applications, you uh, but without worrying about the uh, you know the blockchain maintenance and support. And of course, uh, after that, we've been also been focusing on building up the blockchain uh, data services, where we can provide more and more, you know, the on-chain data uh, to our developers, so that they can easily consume that via API, uh, so that they can empower their, you know, analytics and also empower their data queries uh, using the DApps. And lastly, on top is about the developer toolkits, which been uh, we've been uh, working closely with the partners, and we look to um, enable some of the developer toolkits uh, later this year, so that you know that our developer can easily uh, by you know drag and drop or having a more in interactive in user interface to build their um, you know the applications. And on the right hand side is the security uh, foundations that we've been work, uh, working very hard to, um, you know, to, to, to be able to offer in the market. Uh, from the very Web3 native security capabilities, such as the private key sharding capability, and also the AML capabilities, we uh, already uh, went live two products uh, last month. Uh, with, su uh, with such kind of API-driven services, you can easily subscribe to that and empower your applications. But of course, we also been uh, working uh, with some of the, you know, where we uh, web to uh, cloud security offerings such as NDDDoS or Cloud Firewall. So in case that you are looking into a rich media entertainment or like maybe a gaming or a DeFi, which are requiring a security capability, you can easily subscribe to that kind of service as well. So I just mentioned about uh, how, um, you know, the, the our Alibaba Cloud's cross-region network will be able to help the application builders. Um, so here is an example. So traditionally, when we look into a cross-region network connectivity, you will easily been going through quite a number of different ISPs across the world. And um, it's over the internet, so, those, so, so there's no guarantee about the performance and you can easily uh, running into uh, the uh, high latency and also a packet loss when when the traffic is uh, you know traveling around the world. So with uh, Alibaba Cloud's uh, you know cloud enterprise network, we leverage the Alibaba's uh, transmission network, uh, the backbone network in the back end, so we can. Um, offer you with a very reliable network connectivity in any two points across the world, as long as there are, you know, the regions um, for Alibaba, then you can easily connect it to that into the, uh, the ingress 
and then um, you know there will be a point where you will express the the network. So it, between the point, you will be able to enjoy the high SLA of ninety nine point nine five, and it's a very reliable uh, network connectivity, and you can set it up within minutes, and. The beauty is that it's all subscribed by the bandwidth or traffic. If you having uh, no uh, bandwidth at the very beginning, then you you wouldn't need to pay much. So it's a very handy uh, network uh, that uh, covering the global uh, coverage. So it can help you to build a very decentralized application across the world within minutes. And the other, uh, here is an example. We have a, you know, a security provider who are building on our cross network by leveraging the cloud enterprise network, which I just mentioned, the CEN product. And of course, the, you know, because they are also managing the private key sharding technologies. So they also be able to uh, need to securely store or process the, the, the private key on the, of the, the, you know, the, the, the address. So they leverage our TE uh, using the SGX space so they can easily build up an isolated um, uh, space within their application to handle the, the, the private key. So by leveraging this uh, solution, it will easily be uh, increase the network stability by 30%, but of course, by reducing the cost by 20%. And here is a, a sample of the security capabilities that which we can provide to the Web3 native applications from the KYC to the MPC TE, uh, you know, private key sharding technologies, and also the AML, uh, and also the smart contract reviews. So those would be some of the samples of the security products we can offer as a services to, um, you know, any builders. And here is an example. We have a Web3 uh, customer in um, a, a project in the Philippines. So initially, they uh, they have a they have to fulfill the regulatory requirements to have the the you know the EKYC for you know the Filipinos, and they they didn't have uh, initially they didn't have any experiences, and is uh, they were looking for a very automated and act highly uh, compliant solution that can meet such kind of regulatory requirements. So Alibaba Cloud, we come to them and we provide them with a EKYC as a services so that they can easily plug and play using the API uh, and SDK to be embedded into their mobile phone. So the end result is so encouraging. So after having this integration, they will be easily reduce their manual effort of the checking of the IDs by 90%. And um, the user onboarding process has been so smooth. It's been done within, uh, you know, less than three minutes. And the reduction of the identity fraud has been uh, greatly reduced because, you know, the EKYC can provide a identity, um, you know, fraud detection as well. So though that concludes uh, a brief introduction of how, uh, you know, Alibaba Cloud can provide, you know, some of the technologies as a service that can easily help you to build your uh, application within a more secure and reliable way. So thank you. Thank you, Raymond. That, that was fascinating and very interesting and great to see Alibaba Cloud offering Web3 services and, and, and even expanding it. Um, the EKYC looks very interesting. Um, so let, let's move on to the next section, um, which will be more of an informal panel discussion. Um, titled Building the Next, Alibaba Cloud and Elastos. Um, and so what I'd like to talk about is touch upon, you know, our views of Web3 and the different opportunities we have on how we can partner together to help move the industry forward. Um, what I'd like to probably do is start with you, Raymond. Um, <clears throat> that is, there's probably a big misconception in that Web3 is here to fully replace Web2 tomorrow, or it is going to be its own thing, it's gonna have its own brand new players. And I think what people don't realize is the existing big Web2 players such as Alibaba Cloud, they have a huge part to play, right? And there's always gonna be a need for mass efficient cloud storage, 
um, and services provider. So Raymond, I'd love to get your view um, on that and just maybe dispel that myth um, just for the benefit of the audience. Okay, so there's a, a very interesting uh, trend nowadays is, um, you know, a lot of Web3 uh, enterprise or customers, they are looking into a way to innovate with, uh, you know, in the Web3 spaces. But also on the other side, we are also looking in, uh, that some of the Web3 uh, native applications and builders, they are looking into, uh, a, uh, you know, the Web2 uh, use cases and scenario. So the trend here is that, we are seeing the convergence between you know the web 2 and web 3 so i wouldn't say it's a replacement rather there will be a eventual convergence between you know web 2 and web 3 so that would be the trend and indeed that uh, we've been working closely with with some of the web 3 um, you know leaders uh, to uh, build up some joint solutions that can help the web 2 enterprises to move into the web 3 way because why why is that is because the traditional web two enterprise whenever they consider an innovation in web three they don't have the crypto wallets they don't have the expertise and the skill sets so they do not know how to get started they do not know how to pay and they do not how, how to implement that and they don't even know how to operate that. So that's why uh, by leveraging the power and the skill sets from the Web2 native teams, we can easily build up a joint solution that can help to benefit uh, Web2 enterprises to move into that. But of course, from the Web3 perspective, they are also looking into growing their user bases and um, you know Web2, how to easily um, you know get those Web2 traditional enterprises to get on board. That would be uh, you know some of the topic that we've been discussing, uh, you know like DID or some of the like uh, some of the very. Um, powerful use cases such as you know loyalty program or metaverse those would be some of the example that we are looking into so that you know we can bridge the web 2 and web 3 together great thanks thanks very much that's a really important point and, and, and very interesting um michelle i know you know you and i we've, we've been uh, collaborating um for a while now um you're very well versed uh, in the web 3 space spoken to many projects you know, just for the benefit of our respective communities, what are some of the collaboration opportunities that you see with Elastos and this partnership with Alibaba Cloud? So actually, as, as mentioned from a technique, we can see from technical point of view and financial point of view, okay? From technical point of view, say we can see that in the Web3, it's just start this kind of business. They all, we just you start to use blockchain-based technologies for the innovations. It's similar as a, the Alibaba groups launched the e-commerce business as 1999, but it's the best moment is after 20 years. It's a 2019, right? So this is, we need maybe 10 years, 20 years to move smoothly and converge web two business and web two technology and to web three, right? So actually, so that's why we make the journal even measures. And this is for the tight view point of view, right? We start the innovations and we, we we cooperate with the best blockchain, public blockchains to find the business scenarios and provide the best solutions for our web to customers, enterprise customers to find what will be make the mutual business benefits for service provider, for public blockchain, uh, for our enterprise customers. And from business point of view, from financial point of view, also we we just launched our the Web3 Accelerators programs uh, at the beginning of this year. We have, how we can, we enable, we cooperate with different public chains, maybe with Elastos, we have already done the partnership with Avalanche, Polygon. That's why we want to build a strong ec ecosystem with public chains, with uh, venture capitals. We, we will choose the best uh, startups and uh, the best project entering the, our accelerators and then, we help them to grow. And then after maybe one year, two years, it can be a unicorn in the Web3 industries. That's why it means that Alibaba from business point of view, we will give the both the technology support and the financial support to enable this Web3 ecosystem. And I truly believe that with Elastus, with your best technologies, with your solutions, DLD, DRM, and the wallet, digital wallet solutions, we can enable so many web two business into web three and also we can uh, bring uh, best 
uh, in class business into the elastic ecosystems. And I think this can be bring sustainable mutual benefits for both Alibaba Cloud and Elastos. Thank you. I agree. No, no, thanks, Michelle. And, you know, as you mentioned, it's, it's very broad. And I think, you know, when it comes to um, Elastos, you know, we've built a Web3 technology stack. So for us, it's about, hey, this is open source. We want others to use it, developers to come and build their vision um, and businesses within the Web3 space. And so having things like one-click deployed solutions for validator nodes, things like decentralized storage nodes or um, carrier nodes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, people don't necessarily always want to be building that from scratch. Having a one-click deployed solution from, you know, partners that are experienced and have the expertise such as Alibaba Cloud just makes sense, right? Especially when you're looking at it at a commercial um, or a business um, scale. Uh, and on that, I guess I, I wanted to get, Sash, your view, you know, you're kind of creating an entire Ella city. You know, it's, it's a city that's empowering this access economy. You know, you may not necessarily be offering some of the technical infrastructure and be relying on third parties. I think you mentioned it with Hive nodes as an example, but I'd love to get your thoughts a little bit more on that and how you kind of see it from a builder's perspective. Sure. Um, well, yeah, Raymond and Michelle made many great points and actually um, Web3, I mentioned before, is the evolution of the internet. It is one. Um, and it's not about us versus them. It's about the, uh, the merging of these technologies and all we're looking at today is the emergence of tools that give individuals more choice. Uh, and that's to say, well, if I have more choice, I can now decide, do I want to, you know, which provider would I like to use for certain things? But it doesn't negate the actual underlying infrastructure and the need for all of this infrastructure, which is something which Alibaba Cloud is so you know, important in supplying. Um, so, so when I look at our side, you know, we, we, we host to IPFS, but we need to think about, uh, or we enable um, vendors to choose where they host from uh, and connect that into the uh, protocol. But ultimately we need to think about CDN still, we still need to think about bandwidth problems. Um, these are all, and, and you know, geographical locations, these are all things which I'm, I'd be very excited to talk more about. Um, when we look at uh, the runtime aspect and storing code, uh, you know, the user has control over their identity with their DID, but they need to pick where they want to store their code and who their provider is. So when we see one click uh, solutions and we see the options to, for instance, um, you know, pay Alibaba Cloud to have um, as a storage provider, you know, these are excellent use cases in which um, a user has. Uh, and, you know, we can be really nerdy and say, okay, we want the own your own data economy where everything sits in my home server and I'm in complete full control. But your everyday consumer doesn't necessarily want that and I think that kind of goes back to what Raymond mentioned about you know there's a lot of um there's a lot of um experience in the web too on how to bring this um you know environment of user experience and making it user friendly enough for your everyday consumer to basically be interacting with these new tool sets but not necessarily realize that that's what they're doing um, and that's what we want to move towards where almost the, the technical aspect is completely hidden and it's just this lovely user experience like we have on the internet today uh, and we have lots of different providers from all across the world that we can select and choose from and the efficiency that these new tool sets bring mean that me as a consumer I get served better so an asset I can uh, I can resell that asset on, or you know if I'm in um, part of the category of being a part of the royalties, uh, I can equally um, you know receive streamed income. And there's three primary technologies that I like to look at: it's um, robotics, automation, and artificial intelligence. Uh, and we're seeing the rise of these technologies increasingly more. And we can say smart contracts and blockchain falls under automation because they're ultimately distributed ledgers that are just you know collecting uh, consensus on information around the world but uh, actually these three tool sets are increasingly going to become more apparent in our world as time goes on and um, you know by us being included in the digital economy by us having these service providers and who can help service us and us to be able to derive value more and more from the economy and um, that basically rises our ability to earn income. And I think that's what we all strive for, to, to have more income, to raise our standards of living and to have a better environment for our families. So hopefully these, these tool sets will um, you know, continue to, well, they will continue to emerge, but hopefully um, 
individuals and their entities that Alibaba Cloud can continue to, to provide these integral services because they are needed more and more. Uh, it's very important. No, thanks, Session. <clears throat> I think, you know, that pretty much speaks to the, the ethos of Elastos and Web3 in general. It's about empowering the user with choice, right? And giving them control of their own digital destinies. Um, and I know I kind of went through it earlier um, during my presentation, but our main focus or key pillar is, you know, identity, um, because the first thing you need to be in control of is your identity. You know, that's what you care about most. And so that is why, you know, we have a dedicated identity chain. Um, it com you know, we have a very mature and developed DID that conforms to all the known technical standards. Um, and that really interests me because, you know, Raymond, you, you went over briefly on one of the slides, the EKYC service that Alibaba Cloud offers. You know, when it comes to DIDs, yes, users can choose what they share and what they don't share about their personal data. So if they want, they can remain completely anonymous. And then depending on who they're interacting with, they can share differing levels of data. And part of that is going to be things like KYC because, you know, as a business, I need to know my customer and I need to know certain attributes. So for example, I need to know that it's, you know, they're old enough to buy a certain um, service or an item, or they live in a specific location, or they have the right credentials or whatever it is. Um, that's really important. Um, and so, and then we've also got a lot of regulation coming in, especially in the Web3 space. So to me, it makes absolute sense that Alibaba Cloud is offering this EKYC service. Um, Raymond, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about it in terms of, you know, how do you see it potentially working with something like the Elastos DID and within the context of an access economy? Yeah, I mean, um, firstly, for about the EKYC services is so um, been proven and quite mature uh, product that are used by, you know, Alibaba and, uh, you know, a lot of different uh, business. So uh, these uh, services is very easy to use. It's a API driven, um, you know, approach. So um, I think one of the integration point is, um, you know, say, for example, that really depends on the business itself, right? Uh, regulations, the environment, and in any particular country who has, you know, more stringent uh, policies and regulatory requirements, I guess, uh, you know, the, the you know, the EKYC definitely can play a role um, when to combine and fully integrated with Elasto solutions, and we can build up such kind of uh, solutions to, you know, uh, map the, you know, the really the physical and the reality world into the, you know, the Web3 and uh, on-chain data. So that would be one of the integration point I can think of and easily can get started with. And nowadays, uh, people are exploring the, you know, the tokenization of the, you know, the real world assets. So that's another part that where, you know, that combining the regulatory uh, requirements and you know the policies in particular industries then we can explore some of the use cases where you know we had we need to uh, identify the real persons or a real identity uh, and so that we can get that then um, tokenized you know so that those will be some of the ideas that i can that's great um uh, I, I was also quite keen maybe just to touch upon it a little bit around sustainability so you know that's really important you know esg general sustainability the environment um and you know one of the really interesting things that elastos does is that we leverage the hash rate of the bitcoin network to help secure elastos through what is known as merge mining so essentially we're recycling the bitcoin power that's already been used to secure Elastos, you know, in my mind, that's a great way of, you know, maximizing sustainability whilst leveraging the power you get through proof of work. Um, I'd love to hear, I guess, from either from yourself, Michelle or Raymond, you know, what sort of things is Alibaba and Alibaba Cloud doing in the sustainability front? Because as we know, you know, cloud and computing power does use up a lot of power. Um, and um, I'd love to hear more from, from your perspective on that. Okay, maybe 
I get started first. So uh, indeed, uh, sustainability and ESG is one of the very um, key focus uh, in recent years, even from Alibaba Group and also Alibaba Cloud itself. Uh, we actually has already released, uh, you know, the you know carbon neutrality goal. goal. Um, you know, and also we also release a, um, you know, the carbon emission action report, um, you know, lately, which are also available on the internet. So basically, what it describes is the goal, uh, what we can achieve uh, from uh, scope one, two, three, and three plus, um, including our, the group itself, the business itself, and also the, you know, our partners, our ecosystem partners, and upstream and downstream uh, value chain, how they, uh, you know, from Adi Baba Cloud, uh, how we can uh, together with those partners to achieve a neutral, uh, you know, the carbon neutrality uh, eventually by that uh, by the target target date. And secondly, from Alibaba Cloud ourselves, we've been also investigating uh, investigate a lot of uh, green technologies. Not only from the uh, the data center itself, we uh, the latest data center we release we release uh, achieve a T, um, you know the a green energy emission rate, um, you know, uh, less than 1.09, so which is a quite encouraging figure as well. And from time to time in the future, we definitely will be focusing on more and more uh, green energy for our data center. And of course, from the cloud itself, we've been uh, releasing some of the very good features in the future, such as, you know, the green building, so that, you know, whenever a, um, a, a Web3 application you are using Alibaba Cloud, you'll be able to see what types of, uh, you know, the carbon emissions that you are using uh, from the cloud layer. So you, you have an idea of about um, your contribution to the sustainability. So those would be some of the features that we've been uh, working on and, um, you know, to empower the, you know, everyone's awareness of, about sustainability and ESG. No, that's great to see. And I think, you know, it's, um, really impressive to see, you know, big partners such as yourselves leading by example. I think, you know, often or not, when the, when the big players move first or demonstrate sustainability goals, then the rest of the industry follows. So it's, it's great to see Alibaba Cloud um, very much focused um, on that. So um, this, is, this has been a great panel discussion. I am conscious of time, and, and I did want to um, raise some of the Q&A questions um, that we've received. Um, as you can imagine, the most prominent one has been um, why, in terms of why has Elastos and Alibaba Cloud partnered um, in the Web3 space? I guess from an Elastos perspective, it was a very easy decision. You know, Alibaba Cloud um, is the largest cloud service provider in Asia um, and one of the top globally um, very interesting, very innovative, um, as Raymond mentioned, has gone deep into Web3 service offering, things like EKYC, um, audit, blockchain auditing, um, you know, uh, you know, just from a personal perspective, you know, um, I, I'm part of the Creda project and at Creda, we use a lot of um, Alibaba Cloud resources, in particular the Max um, Computing, to help us perform mass complex calculations to power our credit models. Um, so for us, you know, it, it just makes a lot of sense. And, you know, as Sasha and Raymond mentioned, you know, Web3 can't, you know, brand new visionaries in Web3 can't do it alone. You know, we need the help and the support and the collaboration of those that are already leading the way in the Web2 space so we can merge together, you know, in this utopian future. Um, but Michelle, you know, from your perspective, you know, why why Elastos and what you know, what is it that you saw that really interested you and, and you thought, yep, this makes sense. Let's do this partnership and let's collaborate and you know help build the future. Okay, cool. So I, 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 uh, the guys are, I think that Elastic, Elastos and Alibaba were working together to create a new digital landscape that is secure, scalable, and user-centric. I think that by combining the power of the cloud capabilities and the innovations while paying the way for more innovation uh, futures for the Web3, 
And I think that uh, the collaboration together will provide a more secure digital space while addressing the challenges, capabilities, interoperabilities, and the innovation is a core of both companies' works. And I think, I truly believe that through this kind of collaborations, uh, we have the hybrid approach to storage to provide best uh, to the world, allow, allowing uh, Elastos to maintain and control its data will benefit from the advantage of Alibaba's infrastructures. So uh, when we couple it together uh, from business point of view, firstly, we can uh, provide the, the efficiency with the developers to implement a nodes of the Elastos one click one-stop solutions in Alibaba. And also uh, it provides the customers, special enterprise customers to the new world, Web3 new world, to see that how we can use the different tools of the Web3 to build our next generation infrastructures. Because you know, for Web3, the customers will use directly the cloud business, but in the Web3, they will build every DApp applications on the public blockchain. So they will, this kind of the synergies provide both of parties who have the mutual agreement and the mutual benefits for your developers or for our enterprise customers. And, and we truly believe that they can make sustainable benefits for us in the future. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Um, another question we had um, for, for you, Raymond, I guess would be, you know, you're, you've been in the Web3 space for a good few years now um, and, and seen as one of the leaders, um, but obviously, you know, more longer term, you were, you came from Web2. From your perspective, you know, when it comes to your customers and partners, where do you see the differences in terms of like what a traditional Web2 business needs from a um, cloud provider versus what does Web3 developers care about? Okay. Yeah, actually, that's a very great topic that uh, we've been discussing quite a lot uh, with, you know, both sides. So um, I've been with, uh, you know, the Web2 space for a long time, more than, you know, 15 years. So um, one thing I, I think is, um, it's, it's been well established business, you know, it's been so there for, you know, hundreds of years. And uh, the people, the mindset and, you know, the, the way of doing business, you know, it's already been there and it's very structured. And uh, we've been, you know, nowadays Alibaba Cloud actually has been helping, you know, 4 million, four million of customers from the Web2 spaces to innovate to onboard the cloud or maybe digital transform their business into cloud business. So those will be some of the uh, the very prominent topics that we've been discussing with all those uh, customers from the web tool spaces, how to make things better, how to innovate their in, uh, original business into a more innovative way by you know leveraging, say for example, AI that where everyone is talking about, or maybe say, uh, you know, how to leverage the public chain to um, to do their loyalty program or maybe do their matters. So those would be some of the very typical topics that we've been in talk with the Web two uh, customers. But when it comes to Web three native. Uh, you know, community and the business is totally different. Firstly, you know, the people, um, they are, uh, they represent the, you know, the younger generations of people. Whenever we've come to the events, you know, uh, we see a lot of young people with very fantastic, um, you know, ideas of innovations and they are very full of passion to, uh, you know, make changes to the world. And, we see that uh, very, very uh, good and fantastic ideas that can be, you know, turned into, uh, you know, very the good innovation or even re revolution to our uh, the human world. And um, they are fast moving, they are very uh, diligent, hardworking, uh, and, you know, uh, even the mindset, the way of doing business is totally different. And um, so uh, it's, you know, for a, a, a company like us, uh, we definitely need uh, specialized and uh, very uh, specific uh, skill set in order to meet with that kind of uh, community and that kind of uh, requirement. So that's why we established a team last year. 
and uh, you know we find that is the way that we we have to make it happen so that we can get into this sector and get to talk with those specialists uh, in this field. So um, it's a very different um, experiences for Alibaba Cloud as well. But thanks, we have already been there, and we've been uh, you know the achievement we've done so far is quite encouraging from the team building perspective, from the expertise that we had recruited, and from the business that uh, um, you know, and some of the key projects that we have done and uh, from some of the ecosystem partnerships that we've been in talk with, say, for example, Elastos and some of the other public chains. I think the the, the outcome so far is so uh, good. And I think uh, I really look forward to the, you know, the near future where we'll be growing all these Web3 businesses together with, uh, you know, the communities and the builders in Web3. Great. Thank you, Raymond. And yeah, no, I agree. I think it's, it's great to see, you know, um, Alibaba Cloud embrace the Web3 community and find ways you can help support us um, in our journey, you know, one of the first, um, you know, versus your peers. Um, I'll, I'll just do one more quick question, uh, maybe for Sasha, who's in a unique position of both being um, a core infrastructure builder in terms of things like DRM and runtime for the Elastos ecosystem, but also as a client end, um developer so with with Ella city and i know you've got the flint ai district etc sasha to you what does a partnership you know allows us with alibaba cloud bring you in terms of confidence in building on elastos or the opportunities um, that you can see you know where do you see benefits as a developer Sure. Um, so yeah, Michelle and Raymond <clears throat> touched on these elements, and I think the there's such a broad offering that Alibaba Cloud brings. Uh, and you know, from a personal aspect, I look at it from everything from the hosting side, uh, the bandwidth to the entertainment um, connections, potentially into the actual financial arm, uh, and really um, the storage um, load provider and how this can all be tied up into you know one click solutions that can quickly be deployed. Uh, for user experience. The KYC and AML as well is really important. Um, you know, we really, when we talk about access economy, um, we're enabling entrepreneurs all around the world to not only just look at digital assets such as entertainment, uh, media, you know, podcast, uh, music, whatever it will be, but to actually extend into completely new industries, um, which I can touch on more so. But in any case, it will be such a, a, a disappointment in the journey if it was to become a, an illegal or a, um, you know, a, a market in which people take advantage of. So the way we combat that is we need to enable these verifiable credentials um, where we can have vendors do KYC. And then we can also, you know, through that allow for user um, restricted content to happen. So you can verify that you are a, a, you know, age restricted, so you are of the appropriate age to, to watch certain content. Um, but also to meet regulation laws around the world. Um, specifically, if we're dealing in finance, I think that's you know, extremely important. Uh, and when we look at Elasti with multiple different districts, I think um, when we have digital identities and DIDs with verifiable credentials, there can be certain criteria that we have in place, um, which you know is issued through Alibaba and their technical support um, to ensure that you know as parents and as um, you know, as a generation. Uh, we need to look out, uh, look out for everyone in this environment, and it can't just be a wild, wild west. Uh, it was mentioned about how you know we're we're really young in this, really, this, let's say twenty years to find the full maturity for the best business practice. I know Mikhail talked a little bit about this, Michelle, um, but really, um, this is the case, and and right now we're in a wild, wild west setting, and we need to bring in these new tool sets and this new infrastructure to to bring compliance and regulation in a way which we can all benefit, we can all derive, derive value from it, but we can also be in an environment which is compliant and also uh, trusted. So for our side, from my side, I'm really excited about, you know, exploring the DID aspect um, because DIDs work with any, you know, cross-chain compatibility and they bring in the reputation layer and also the ability to control your data vault, which can also be a node provided by Alibaba Cloud. Uh, and then the ability to bring in that runtime DRM element to trade and to trust who you're trading with and to show everyone gets trade, um, 
royalties for it. So there's multiple different areas, but I'm extremely excited for this partnership. And I, and I really do hope we can find um, increasingly more synergies to work together um, to you know, empower this next generation access economy. Great, thank you, Sasha. Well, look, everyone, um, thanks for joining. You know, hopefully this gave our respective communities a good overview and introduction into Elastos, Alibaba Cloud, and the different streams and opportunities that we're looking at in terms of this partnership. Um, as always, thank you, Sasha. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Michelle, for taking the time to, to join this. It was very, I very much enjoyed it. Um, and thanks to um, everyone that's uh, tuned in to watch it. Uh, and on that note, goodbye.